I make this week? Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elena. If you're new here, I'm so glad that you're here. This channel is all about DIY, doing everything yourself on a super tight budget. Also, side note, just to let you know, I do have a top to my head. I just cut it off and I didn't realize it for the rest of this video, so. I'm really excited about it. I think I invented something new. Can't be for certain. And I'm calling it salt and pepper dough. So stay tuned for that. It's later in the video. You're not gonna wanna miss it. It is so cool, so easy, and it's free, which is another one of our projects is a hanging basket lamp. If you haven't seen a tutorial on it, I was shocked at how quick it was. From the time I got my supplies out and hung it up, it was five minutes. And then our last project, What's the last project? Oh yeah, my last project that I did, I used a thrifted candle holder, but it's a design that you could use on a pot or any kind of like sculptural piece. And if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel for weekly DIY videos. And so awkward. Let's go ahead and get right into the projects. <laughs> This first project, I used a basket that I thrifted for $3, a plug-in hanging light kit from Amazon that I found for $8, and some Dollar Tree nautical rope to create a boho hanging pendant. This project was insanely easy. I honestly couldn't get over it. All I did was make a hole in the bottom of the basket by cutting the wicker with the scissors large enough so the end of my cord could fit through it, but small enough that the light socket wouldn't. some of the nautical rope around the opening, which I actually wish I hadn't because it was totally unnecessary, but I had already committed to it, so I went with it. I threaded the cord through the basket and that's it. Seriously, for $12 and five minutes, you really cannot beat this DIY. For this next project, I wanted to make a boho wall hanging and uh, pretty sure I just invented a new thing and I'm low key excited about it. I'm calling it salt and pepper dough. I started by making normal salt dough by mixing two cups of flour, one cup of salt and one cup of water. I kneaded it on the counter for about 10 minutes until it was super soft and pliable. I then rolled it out on the counter until it was about a half inch thick. Just ignore my kids books. I was using them as thickness guards to stop my rolling pin from rolling the dough too thin, but you could probably find something that makes a uh, a little bit more sense. Next, I added ground black pepper to my dough and this was the game changer and it made it speckled so it would have a really earthy pottery look to it. Once I was happy with the amount of speckling I had, I rolled the dough back out using my handy Daniel Tiger book. I added one last shake of black pepper for good measure and moved on to cutting out the shapes for my wall hanging. I found some household items to use as circle cutters in a variety of sizes. I wasn't sure exactly what size I was going to want, so that's why you'll see I have three different sizes, but I ended up just using two. So I used my large and medium circles to create a ring from my dough. I set the center cutout from my ring aside because I am going to use it in my hanging. I used my large cutter again for another circle of dough. Next, I wanted to cut my circles in half to make a variety of half moon shapes. You can also ignore the smallest circle pictured here because I didn't end up using it. Next, I used a skewer to poke two holes in each of the half moons so that I would be able to connect all of the pieces. I transferred everything to a baking sheet and baked the dough for two to three hours at 250 degrees. After my pieces cooled, I began assembling my wall hanging. I used some juke cording to tie the pieces together using just a simple knot on the backside. These things are super hard and durable after they're baked, so if you are clumsy like me and end up dropping the entire sheet pan, no worries. Mine didn't break or even chip, which was shocking.
last step was to make a tassel and for this I used Dollar Tree yarn. If you're not sure how to make a tassel, this is a fast forwarded version, but I do have a tutorial in one of my other videos, which is linked right here at the top of the screen. So check that out for full instructions on how to make a tassel. my tassel to the bottom of my wall hanging and I can say with complete honesty this is my favorite DIY I have ever made. For my last boho DIY, I used this thrifted candle holder that I did a terrible job spray painting, but you could honestly do this project on any kind of vase, pot, or what have you. I started by mixing my color palette and I went with the natural tones to match the boho aesthetic. I added baking soda to all of my paints because I've got an unhealthy obsession with the faux terracotta painting method. I painted my base color on and when that was dry, I decided it was a little too bright white, so I mixed a new color that was a little less bright. After that was dry, I started painting my accent colors on. I wanted this to be super abstract and almost color blocky, so I painted one large section of each of my other three colors. Once that was dry, I used a small paintbrush to paint black wavy accent lines around the entire thing. So here we are at the end of our projects and I just love how each of these pieces has added a little touch of boho to my home. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love if you gave it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel for weekly DIY videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back here soon.